Okay. That's it. Uh, we're doing uh, statistics. Now, um, with statistics, uh, it's a good time to pull out the old calculator. Uh, the Casio. Now, uh, in the middle of the formula sheet, which is this fellow, it up. Anyway, with the formula sheet, uh, there's the standard deviation uh, box, which I've got up here. Um, and there's also a list of the instructions for the calculator uh, to do standard deviation. But I'm just going to go into that statistic mode first and see what else we can do um, before we get to standard deviation. So it all starts with the mode button, second one from the right there, hit the mode button, and you've got three modes there. Uh, and the one we're after is number two, statistics, the stat, which stands for statistics. So that's why we get a two. So we're in statistics mode now. And um, we have button one up to eight shown on the screen there. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be doing one, which is uh, VAR. So you get a whole bunch of different modes going, statistic modes here. So we're, we're doing number one. And that means we're putting some um, statistics in. We've got our readings here, 38275. There's only five readings because it's just a simple example. So each time you put a number in, you just hit equal sign. And it builds up this table. Two, seven, and five. Hit enter. Okay, that's how many we've done. And <clears throat> now we hit all clear. Those are now stored in the in the calculator. Uh, and now we want to get the statistic values off that. So we hit the shift button for that one. The shift is over the left hand side. Hit the shift button and number one. And this is where you can pick up which type of statistics you want for that data. And the most of the time when you're putting data in, it's just going to be the one which your variables. But um, when you're doing statistics, there's different types of statistics you can do here. And uh, the one we're after is the VAR, which um, the instructions here on the formula sheet say a four, but uh, four is not going to work. That'll be a sum. That'll tell you the sum of them. Uh, we want the VAR one. So we get a five. And that's the one that has standard deviation in it. Now, Standard deviation symbol is a sigma, which is a S in Greek, lowercase so s. So, uh, we, and there's two ones uh, that we can read off here. By the way, let's go through all of them here. So this is in the variable uh, statistics, in summary statistics. Um, N is the number of um, readings or numbers in your sample. So, uh, in in this case, there's five readings, so n would be five. Um, the x with the bar over it, that's average or mean, and we've already calculated that it happens to be five as well. Um, sum, we would have had to use the sum statistics. We can't get it from here. And then uh, we've got sigma n and we've got sigma n minus one. So n means population standard deviation, and n minus one means sample standard deviation. Now we're using population here because we're doing a summary of all of the readings in our batch. We had five readings and we're doing all of them. So that's called population standard deviation. Sample standard deviation is when you have a box of 50,000 parts and you're only going to measure 100 of them, then that's a sample. You're taking a sample standard deviation. It gives you a slightly different number, <clears throat> depending on how many you do, of course. If you're doing it thousands, then minus one is not going to make much difference, is it? Okay. So which one do we want? We want number three there, hit three, and then um, we're up to here. So we've just hit three. Now we hit the equal sign, and there's my standard deviation, 2.28. Now what on earth does that mean? Well, you notice that we can do all the other things, like averages and stuff, which I'm assuming you know what that means. Let's just have a look what standard deviation actually means. This little graph, um, courtesy of Wikipedia, does a good job. Now. Just making myself a new. Make sure it's working. Yes, it is. It's fat there. Yeah, it's a bit skinny. Oh, I'm a bit fussy here. Great. Now, the um, 
This is known as a bell curve, right? Bell curve. And uh, what it what it actually is, it's the um, statistically the average is also the most common size. If you have a perfect bell curve like this, and for example, if you had heights of people, the average height would be also the, uh, one of the most common heights. And so the height of the graph is how many people are at that level. So if 100 people are, are, with, are within close to this height, then you'd expect here there's probably only, you know, 10 people close to that height, and there's only like two people close to that height, and there's hardly anyone close to that height. That's what the graph means. So the graph is frequency, or how many. So it's frequency versus some sort of measurement. And the measurement could be, you know, how high somebody is, how heavy somebody is, um, whatever reading that you're wanting to take. Now, I've only talked about humans there, but it could be readings that you've taken out of uh, manufacturing. You might be measuring a dimension and seeing if that dimension is uh, keeping track of uh, what the drawing says, what it's supposed to be. Now, what's a standard deviation? A standard deviation is this. That distance from there to there is one standard deviation, which is why we say one sigma. So one sigma away from the average, so here, it, right in the middle is the average here, to the mean. This is our x. So that would be the X mean, average mean, that reading. So if we're one sigma away from that mean, then if it's plus and minus, so it could be that much bigger or that much smaller, then 34% smaller, 34% larger. So altogether 68%. So what that tells you is if you're within one standard deviation of the average, then that's going to be around 68% of the scores. That's this one here. One standard deviation. 68% of all of the readings should be within one standard deviation. Now, two standard deviations, which is further away, picks up another 13% up and down, add another 26%. So now that's 95%. So two standard deviations is just about every reading. So that's taking in a uh, a lot of the common sizes. Uh, and if you're outside of two standard deviations, that means you're in the top 5%. So if this was um, how tall you are, stature, then anyone who's more than two standard deviations from the mean is in the top 5%. Um, but, oh, um, yeah, because 95%. Uh, well, actually, it's it's 5%. 95% is the small people and the tall people. So sorry, in, in terms of height, you're in the top two and a half percent because it's two and a half on one side and two and a half on the other. Now, if you have two standard deviations below, that means you're in the neck, the two and a half percent smallest people or the two and a half percent biggest people up here. All right, now three standard deviations is 99.7 percent. So by the time you're right up here in the graph in three standard deviations away from the mean, that takes in 99.7% of all of the readings that could be uh, taken to that um, score. So if we look at our numbers, if we were to draw a graph with our numbers, it's going to be pretty bad because we've only got five readings. So how do we do this? Well, we have to make this going to be rather pathetic graph here. We've got three, eight, two, seven, five. There's no repeats. So I'm just going to have to make it. It's not going to work because so I've got. I'll go by. Uh, I'll go two at a time. So the smallest is two, and the largest is eight. So that can be not to two, two to four, four to six, and six to eight. See, I can't. I can't go single because um, every reading might be one. So how many have I got between naught and two? I've only got. Uh, should I include? Probably less than. So I'll, I won't include a two. So that'll be nothing. 
Now, including two, but less than four. So we've got one, two. So this will be two on this one. So there's two readings um, bigger than two, but less than four. Right, now between uh, bigger than, uh, including four, but less than six. So we've only got five, so we've got one reading there. And then bigger than six, including eight, we've got two readings. There's my bell curve. We have this, isn't that? That's because we haven't got anywhere near enough readings. So, but you can sort of tell. You know, if if there were if if it was possible that there were more readings that went all the way up to ten, say let's say the score was out of ten, then we would have a zero for our last one as well. So it's kind of looking at bell curvy shape. We got starting off low. I mean, it's it's a pretty rough bell curve. Starting off low and sort of goes up. Oops, so we got a bit of a dip there. That's a bit of a problem. So if this had been a bit more normal, we would have had three in there and would have got a kind of bell curve. But unfortunately, the data was uh, too too rough to do statistics with it. You can't really do statistics with a uh, an N number of readings of five. That's just silly. OK, when, when you're trying to get a bell curve that looks half decent, you'd have to have at least 100. Um, get a reasonable. Um, curve to get a reason bell curve like this, like that. So there we go. Uh, one standard deviation, 68%, plus or minus two standard deviations, 95. Three standard devi deviations, 99.7. Now it goes on. Uh, in Wikipedia, you can pick up that page and go and look at how many standard deviations equals what. Let's just flip down there and have a quick look at it. Which is in here. Right. We have um, one standard deviation there, which is 68%. <clears throat> and two standard deviations is 95%. This is the stuff we'd already done. No, it's the very high um, accuracy they got here. Three standard deviations, 99.7. Four standard de deviations, 99.99. Okay, we're really close to 100% of the readings now. And then five standard deviations is 99 point. <clears throat> this time we've got four nines. Six standard deviations. It's really um, getting crazy now because with six standard deviations, it's 99 and we've got six nines followed by an eight, almost seven nines. <clears throat> or another way to look at it is what's the fraction uh, that's not counted? So with one standard deviation, the fraction that's not counted is about a third, one over 3.1. So a third of them are outside of one standard deviation. So if this was height, 68%, you know, you know, it's close to 66, so that's why this is close to a third. So 68% of the population is within one standard deviation of the average height, and one third of people are more than one standard deviation away. With two sigma, about one twentieth of people, so maybe one person in each classroom, is outside of two standard deviations. With three standard deviations, only one in 370. So if you are three standard deviations away from the average, then you're one out of 370 people or readings, whatever we're measuring. Four standard deviations is one in almost 16,000. So you're getting very rare now. And five standard deviations means it's one in a million and 700,000, almost one in two million. Six standard deviations is one in 500 million. Okay, which is like uh, only a few countries have a population that big. So we don't often go beyond six standard deviations because uh, that's one in half, in half a billion um, readings. Okay. I've got an example here. If we had um, if we had a large number of students where the average score or the mean score was 50 and our 
change back to my red pen. The average score was 50, mean or average is the same thing, by the way. And the standard deviation was 10. All right, means this here, average, that's your reading, that the mark is 50. Uh, let's pretend this percentage of something. <clears throat> or maybe it's out of 60. Um, but anyway, 50, the, the reading is 50. The mean is 50. Why is this mean? <laughs> There's a slight mistake. Yeah, that should be a four and that should be a five. We've got two numbers back to front. All right. <clears throat> 50, 50, which is our average, one standard deviation away from that, because the standard deviation is 10, all we have to do is add 10. So that'll be a 60 there, and that'll be a 40 there. So between 40 and 60 is one standard deviation. Two standard deviations, we add 10 again. So this 60 will become 70, and the 40 gets down to a 30, etc. And so three standard deviations would be everyone between the marks of 20 and 80. So if you got, in other words, if you got more than 80, then you are in the top 430 students. Like if there was 430 students, you're the top. If there's 860 students, you might have come first or second. Right. That's uh, standard deviation. Now we're going to have a look at some um, places where you could use this. Um, this comes from a, a web page. Link here. Um, <clears throat> and we've already mentioned uh, heights or, or measurements and things. Um, uh, we, we can use it in. Um, let's talk about it. Is, uh, a low, okay, so first first thing I want to mention is what's the difference between having a big standard deviation versus having a little standard deviation? So I'm going to use this little graph as my example. There's a graph there. Right, so let me say... You, you notice there's no numbers on this. We don't have what the, the average is. We don't have what the standard deviations is, are. We, this is just generalized in terms of one sigma, two sigma, et cetera. And these readings up the, the right, at the left hand side, that's your count. So it might be in thousands against something. So that just ignore that for a second. We're just looking at the curve itself and the standard deviation. Now, if I have a small standard deviation, this is what it does to the curve. It just squishes it. Everything else is the same, but we have a smaller and smaller standard deviation. So the, the smaller the standard deviation still have the same curve, but it's just getting squashed up. And likewise, of course, if the standard deviation is high, then our graph is just getting uh, longer and flatter. That's it. So we still have the same graph. We just don't. Um, Uh, the only thing we change is um, the stretchiness of it, how stretched it is. And that's what standard deviation is referring to. Deviation from the average, that is. What? How much is it deviating? <clears throat> now, there's also a thing called variation, which is the standard deviation um, divided by the mean. Um, but we will not talk about that right now. OK, now. Um, a place where uh, we use this a lot is uh, in finance. In fact, this is uh, there's an actual course that people do specifically to do statistics in financial situation. It's called actuary. So an actuary is like a mathematical uh, statistical person, and they be good could be working in um, the stock market. Uh, insurance is another very very um, strong user of statistics. So insurance. Uh, they have to work out how much should you pay for your house insurance, for example, depending on what risks you have. And then the actuaries have to work out 
okay, well, uh, what's the chance of getting a bushfire in that suburb? Therefore, we'll calculate the risk that we'll have to pay out for that house. Therefore, we can work out what the premium is to make sure that we don't um, go broke. But we don't want to charge too much, otherwise another insurance company will take their business. So if we don't want to charge too low, otherwise we could go bust because um, everyone's taking their money up. Right, and, and to do that, they'll be using standard deviations of um, of the risk that could happen. All right, the first one we're talking about here is um, is stocks. Uh, we've got an example here. We've got stock A and stock B. They've both got uh, the same average return. So so it all first of all is um, what are you measuring? You have to always decide to measure one thing. You can't you can't just apply it at all until you decide what you're measuring. So so we're going to make it that we're, what we're measuring here is um, return. So maybe if I draw the graphs just to understand it a bit. Sorry, my board was covering. Right now, one of them has, um, so they both got the same average, that's 7% return. That's our average. And um, one of them has standard deviation of 7%, the other one has standard deviation of 2%. Right, so one of them has a 2%. That. And one of them has seven. That's the difference between the two stocks. So this is stock B and two percent. This is stock A. So when I go one standard deviation across, this is one sigma, and you can also be one sigma below. Then my seven percent of A uh, is now another 7%, so that goes 14% return, great return there. However, if you go one standard deviation below, guess what your return is? 0%, whoops, and even worse, we get two sigmas, won't it? Right now, if we have two sigmas, then this one's going to go to 21%, making some serious money. And if we go two sigmas here, we're going to be losing 7%, youch. That's not good. All right, so that's for stock A. Now, if we go to stock B, which is our two percent, then stock B will be at five percent. Oh, sorry, at nine percent up. This is B, or five percent. So we're expecting a uh, sixty-eight percent chance of going somewhere between five and nine percent for B. And then another sigma, two sigmas, which would be 99%. So we're really pretty sure now that it's going to be somewhere between um, 3% and 11%. Be 99%. That'll cover 99% of it. <laughs> or 95, I should say. Right, 68% should cover between 5 and 9%. And 95% should cover between 3 and 11%. Right, so now how, how does that help you? Well, you might be looking at risk and you, you want to be sure that uh, you're not going to be losing money because uh, you're in charge of a whole lot of people's money and they don't they don't, they don't want to lose any money because it might be the year that they retire or something. So you, you might be ke keeping an eye out for what these readings actually are. <coughs> and uh, so you might say, oh, let's let's have stock A because it's um, Going to, you know, we've got the possibility of, of getting 21%. Wow, I and mean, that's really cool, isn't it? Or we might say, no, let's use stock B because the person's just about to retire and they can't possibly uh, lose money. They don't want to lose money. So. <clears throat> or you might get a mixture of the two to get to spread your risk, not money be half in between. All right, we can also do it for forecasting, like the temperature, uh, etc. Although that's very strongly dependent on uh, things like cold fronts. And, what time of year and all that, so it's a bit too complicated. The one we want to look at, of course, is manufacturing. So um, the typical thing would be that we're making something and we're, we're measuring it. And uh, 
classic example, let's say we're machining some circular object and we're taking a reading, getting this diameter. And I think they've got it at 0.5 inches. Um, it's gone 0.5 millimeters, why not? Maybe we're make manufacturing wire. We're a, a wire manufacturer and uh, it's supposed to be 0.5 millimeters thick. <clears throat> but the standard deviation, so that's our average, and standard deviation is 0 0.01 millimeters, also known as 10 microns. Right, so what does that tell us? Well, that means that if we were to draw the graph, which is standard bell curve, your yeah, average is um, 0.5, and your standard deviation, so 68%, is always about the same position in the graph. This standard deviation here is equal to 0 0.01, <clears throat> so that's one sigma. 0.02 for two sigmas, etc. And likewise for undersize as well. <clears throat> now, that's exciting. However, what if we were making rolls of wire or whatever they are? Let's <clears throat> let's keep it simple. Let's let's say we're making drill bits and they're 0.5 millimeters because they're tiny, because they're used for PCB drilling holes in a printer circuit board, electronic circuit board, for example. And this is the diameter of my drill bit. <clears throat> the problem with wire is, uh, you know, it depends if we're measuring the whole wheel, the whole reel of wire, and blah blah blah. So that's why it's used to drill bits. We take these readings and each reading represents that particular drill bit and it's 0.5. Now, what if I was, say, an engineer and I said, OK, we have to specify if the drill bits are within spec or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if the drill bits are, say, three sigmas. One, two, three. Plus or minus. So minus two sigmas and minus three sigmas. Just missed that bit. Now, if if it's plus or minus three sigma, then we'll keep them. But if it gets worse than three sigma, then we're going to chuck them. So if I would say, as as the engineer, or the manager, uh, the quality manager, I'd say we're going to allow a three sigma. So this would be considered as a three sigma process then. And if it's within three sigmas then the product is OK. What does that mean? It could be 0 0.5 millimetres minus 0 0.03, or it could be 0 0.5 plus 0 0.03. That is your specification for this process. And hopefully, if that's the case, then uh, we'll be passing all of them. But if that was no good, they're not going to they're not going to work properly. And the requirement was that they're supposed to be 0 0.02, 0 0.02, then we're going to be throwing some out because some of them within the three sigma are going to be failing that. And of course, if we're going to three sigma, what does that mean? 99.7%, which is one in 430. Pretty good. However, if we manufacture a million of them, we're going to be throwing quite a bit out. So we're going to have to keep get our standard deviation smaller than 0.81. If we're going to manufacture a million of these and we're running a, a fairly tight spec on this drill bit, then we have to do better than standard deviation 0.01. We might need standard deviation 0.001, one micron. And that's why we have to be so careful when we manufacture because um, statistically, you have to keep your accuracy much better than um, your statistic uh, looks like. So you've got to stay really close to that average. You want you want most of your manufacturing to be happening very, very close to the average because you're always going to get ones that it's you know, up here somewhere 
that's where you want most of your stuff to be happening because you're always going to sort of drift down here they're getting too big or they're coming back this way they're getting too small and before you know it you've gone bang straight past your limitations that you've already set and that means you just produced some ways to chuck it out right so that's re really where standard deviation uh, works but there's another situation where standard deviation is handy as well and that is with a sample standard deviation. So are we talking population standard deviation for everything up to now? Now we're talking about a sample. Let's say we had a great big box full of parts and there's 10,000 parts in here. <clears throat> and out of that box, we take 1,000 parts. Now let's make it um, 100,000 parts. And we take 1,000 parts and we measure them all. So we have a sample standard deviation of this. And this, these are our numbers. Our numbers say we have um, a mean of 100. That's a round number. And a standard deviation of 1. So that means that 68% of them are somewhere. So 68% of the ones in that box are somewhere between 99 and 101 in that box of 100,000. But it depends on how many standard deviations we're going to take. Because if we only have one standard deviation, we are only counting 68% of them. So that means you've got an awful lot, like one third of them unaccounted for. We don't know. How big they are. So what are we going to do if they're missing one third that are out of that spec? So the standard deviation of one is not very helpful because it's very, very rough. So if we use two standard deviations, we've now got 95% of our stuff, which means that it's going to be between 98 and 102 millimeters. And that means we're unsure of about 5% or one in 20 could be out of spec and etc. So if we go three standard deviations, this is 99.7%, which means it's between 97 and 103. And that's only one in 430 that are unknown. Okay, hopefully that's a little bit under control. So when we have a six sigma process, which is much more accurate, then our numbers are massive and it's one in like half a billion, um, 500 million will be out of spec, which is considered to be good enough. In other words, your manufacturing is considered to be perfect, but Six Sigma means it's somewhere between 94 and 106. So if we made our specification that it's allowed to be between 94 and 106, which seems pretty crude, but maybe they're just bricks, then we can say we have a six sigma process for a brick manufacturing. Six sigma means that uh, we're basically almost never chucking anything out because 500, one in 500 million gets chucked out. And that's nothing. That's what Six Sigma means. Of course, uh, if that is terrible because this is the uh, manufacturing of a bearing, uh, then we need a much smaller standard deviation than one. If they're bearings, we probably need a standard deviation of like 0 0.0001, like a tenth of a micron or something, which seems ridiculous. And it is, but that's probably what they need to do with uh, Manufacturer bearing ball bearings or something. All right, there's other examples of standard deviation uh, which we won't look at, although the medical ones are pretty interesting. Um, but I just want to stop there with our standard deviation of a batch and why a batch is um, can be used to um, to to guess um, what the standard deviation. We can actually calculate how many in the batch will be out of spec. It's not not quite as simple as just putting those numbers in there. Then we're using a, um, a conversion from standard deviation to a proportion using a, uh, a Z table, Z score. Uh, so if you want to know more about that, uh, you can go and 
us chat GPT what Z score means, but it's outside the scope of our lecture. Z score is converting our batch to the prediction of the number of out of spec parts in your original sample. That's the end.